Ugh, God, I just hate that crap. Wow, you mean pop culture drives pop culture? Oh, that's incredible. Do you have any stocks, Gary? Any investments? No, I mean, my father's got some dough, and but, you know, I told him just to buy CDs because, you know, the stock market's fucked. Just whatever day it's going to be, but it's fucked. I don't know, man. BP yeah, well, I do know. <laughs> you trust me on this one. It's fucked. Okay, it's eventually it's going down. It's going to stay down. 1929 down. I don't know. I made three bucks on Toy Toyota yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You're, you're going to lose 30 bucks. <laughs> you know, in three days, okay, whatever. Gonna happen. That's so wonderful. Uh, short trading, that's really smart. It is. Short trading is smart. It should be. It should be as easy to short trade as it is to, to trade long. Actually, I mean, they should change the game. I'm I'm new to the whole thing. I because that's what makes the market. I really don't know what I'm doing. Well, index funds, dude. Whatever that means, man, index funds ain't gonna do you any good anymore. The market's not going. There's no, there's no place for it to go up. There's no possibility. There's no gains in productivity. There's no anything. So it's not going to. Dow fifteen thousand. Well, that ain't gonna fucking happen. Not unless a dollar's worth about. 15 cents. So, what are, what are you talking about? You mean, uh, why, why will there be no more productivity? Well, because the Chinese now know how, they, the Chinese, I think, technically have more millionaires than we do now. Uh, they know how to uh, enslave their own people now. They don't need our investment capital. Obviously, the Chinese are pretty rich, actually. Um, you know, in terms of having more cash, th and they don't have to borrow money. And so um, they can use their money, instead of buying our bonds, they can invest in their own country, they can invest in their own, their own businesses, and they don't need us exploiting them anymore. So all our rich people who've been making huge profits, our American corporations, off selling basically profits, Chinese labor, themselves. they don't need us anymore. And so all they're going to do is let us be salesmen for them. Well, they'll sell our. They'll, they'll, we'll put some kind of name like Magnavox or something on it, but it's just going to be mostly a Chinese product. They're going to do most of the work and the engineering and the whole sphere, and so they're going to be getting 80% of the money. We're going to get 20%. So our rich people are going to start getting poorer. And as they get poorer, the rest of the economies that's feeding off the crumbs they're leaving behind are starting to get poorer. And the government has no money, it has no revenues coming in, so it's going to have the governments on the state level, municipal level, they're going to start unemploying people, and uh, so the whole thing's going down hard. I mean, unemployed people take money out of the government, they don't pay money don't, into the government. Don't, don't you think that the Chinese people are going to d start demanding a higher quality of life? I mean, with the sort of, sort of like infiltrations of media like YouTube or internet, you know, it's kind of hard to keep under wraps in the like totalitarian style. It doesn't style. matter. It and doesn't to me, matter it's because like they, they, they got a huge to population who is desperate. So as long as they're competing against somebody else who's willing to do the job without benefits, they're never they're not going to have the same life we're going to have because there's somebody going to be willing to undercut the other guy. There's always going to be somebody willing to do the job for five cents less. Yeah, but if you if you change it from China to say Africa, that becomes a new manufacturing yeah, hub. Yeah, then well, they can Africa, no longer Africa build off no, the power well, they've already. Africa, why don't you think the money's already in Africa? It's because Africa's 
unsustainable. You can't put money in Africa. The environment's too harsh, and the politics is too harsh, and so your, your money's just, it ends up getting thrown away. So no one's going to invest in Africa. Well, you could say the same thing about uh, Asia in the late 1900s when we were first moving in there with our imperialist projects and everything. It's just a matter of time. And what I was 1800s? About before, we were moving into China in the 1800s? What are you talking about? 1800s, I'm going to say 19th century. Anyway, point is, I was trying to make a comparison to Eastern Europe and Russia. Their population started, uh, you know, the governments wanted the best technology in the, during the Cold War and everything. They started bringing in consumer products, and the people started becoming wary of what kind of life Style, they could make reforms and eventually they're kind of totalitarian system Brasnos and perestroika why shouldn't the same thing happen in China well first off it's not the same kind of communism in the first place um, and the country is just built so much different. I mean, you got it's all about cities and peasants, you know, rule, rule and city, and so it's so much different. Um, and uh, what else is there? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, you have billionaires in China. I mean, it's not Russia, certainly not Russia of 1950. Uh, you know, Russia degraded and it became. You know, I mean, all these countries, there's no point in even calling them communists because they weren't communists. <laughs> they were already very segregated. Um, so it was a, 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 an economy that, would, that still contained an awful lot of privilege. So there was still a high penalty for any. They were all feeding off of businesses, you know, they were all feeding off of the machine. And, and Where do so, you want to live in a make-believe world? You know. Where do you want to live in a make-believe world? Yeah, whatever. Why do you want to get into a room and make a useless, pointless comment of no value whatsoever? <sighs> Fuck kids. I motherfucked you! And what, you know, what killed Russia well, had really uh, so no, little to no, do with Russia economics. Really so I mean, it had to do with their border, all the crazy Muslims. Um, you know, I mean, they were basically done in by Afghanistan in the end. And, but, but they were also, you got to look at what they were doing. I mean, it wasn't just their, they weren't controlling the economy. They were controlling everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, they had laws against everything. So it was just stupid. Of course people rebelled. What about this theory that Ronald Reagan's psychological effect on, oh fuck, whoever was leader of Russia in the early 80s, that his sort of personal influence was what pushed Russia in the direction it, it, it went in terms of opening up its borders and everything. I know there's one, at least one big guy yeah, who thinks no, that. Gor Gorbachev was the game. Gorbachev was the game. If Gorbachev didn't wasn't premier of Russia, none of it would have happened. And how did Gorbachev get there? We got there because every old guy they gave the job to croaked. Okay, I mean Russia went from from Brezhnev to Gorbachev. You know, Russia went through like I don't know six or seven premiers, and they all dropped dead in a year or two. And so there was, you know, this was a real problem. They kept putting these old guys in the job, and they just weren't up to the job. And so then that's when they resorted to Gorbachev. They said, who's left? And they said, okay, we got this guy that's 80. We got this guy that's 79. Uh, and we got Gorbachev, this guy who's 40, whatever, nine or something. And so they went with the young guy. The and the young guy, guy come, gave the fucking store fucking away. Store. That's true of... Uh, the early 80s, I know that's another theory that just the fact that, you know, George Kennan talked about it in the f in 49 or something with his long telegram 
the whole idea that the Soviet Union is not built as a political system for change in leadership, and it's a very precarious time w when it comes to changes because there's nothing like election. You know, so much can go on in the back room where people are psyching each other out and manipulating each other, and that's why it's a big deal. It's a big, it's a dangerous thing changing leaders like that. So in the 80s when there's like five or six old men all, you know, out of touch and about to die, they finally had to give in and, and uh, give the leadership to this young guy. But the question is, why did this young guy make the changes he did? Personally, I feel it's because of all this technological infiltration from the West, things like TV and the radio, this guy was in touch with the outside world, something that had oh, never been possible. Sputnik, oh, Sputnik, Sputnik, come on. They, 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 had to, they, had to, they were, you know, they had their own technology. <laughs> you know, they had their own nuclear bombs. They weren't, like, living in some hut somewhere. Oh, they got big technology over in the West. No, there's none of that bullshit. Come on. <clears throat> you know. Um, I'll, okay, I'll, I'm I think saying. Gorbachev no wanted peace. peace. I mean, that's what he wanted. He wanted to do this thing where they would still have socialism in Russia, but they would have this perestroika bullshit. They'd have this free trade thing. And he figured they'd win in a trade war. But, you know, but like I said, he, but he went too went fucking, fucking far, far, and he gave the store away, because what he basically said was, okay, let's open the borders, and all the good engineers that the Russians had made in their great socialized school system, all the engineers walked right the fuck out the door. And so they gave away the value of their country. The smartest people they educated at public expense just all left the country. So that was, like, one huge mistake. Okay, so what about, what I'm trying to say is just, when you think of, like, a child's development or his education, the, the period in which Gorbachev grew up was a lot different than the old, the old timers who he replaced. There wasn't that same ca capability of b being uh, a totalitarian uh, censorship kind of government, like, there was these things like TV and radio. Well, I know, but the censorship the and all that other crap had nothing to do with socialism. So that was a stupid mistake in the first place. And so he should have gotten rid of all that crap. That crap was completely destructive to uh, maintaining the socialism. I mean, the socialist countries in Europe now, they don't have any draconian, you can't play rock music and you can't do this. I mean, that, that was crap they needed to get rid of. That was... And that was part of the legacy that made the whole thing hateable by the people. So, I mean, it was, that was just a huge, dumb liability. But it had nothing to do with socialism. Yeah, very, very true. That raises the, uh, the whole 1920s problem about just, you know, those power politics going on within the party, behind the scenes between um, Lenin and uh, Trotsky and, and Stalin. What kind of shape would have socialism taken hadn't Stalin uh, totally wiped out all the insiders and allowed someone like Trotsky, who was more of an internationalist, he wanted to, to not be so aggressive with the outside world, but try to coax them in towards socialism as opposed to, uh, you know, headbutt other countries about it. And, you know, what could have been had it been Trotsky in power, had Stalin not used his power as the Minister of the Interior to sort of weed out all of his competitors. Yeah, well, that, this, we can ask these questions, what if, what if, you know, all day long. But yeah, I mean, it, there's all kinds of critical events that take place that change destinies. And yeah, I think Russia would still be a superpower if Gorbachev never happened, <laughs> you know because it wasn't fundamentally broken. It, I mean, not it was fundamentally broken in terms of people's quality of life, but look, well, look where it is now. I mean, now you got 25 families that own 90% of the country. So, I mean, you know, the average Russian, I don't think, is better off. Yeah, I mean, what do you do when you, you're making such a like, dramatic shift from communism to capitalism and then you've got all these people with that insider information who can immediately buy out all the stock of the best companies and just sort of flourish off of that, you know? That's kind of fucked up. There should have been some kind of intermediary period where things could 
have been laid out a little fair. I don't know how, how you do that because it's unprecedented. It's never happened.